Hi, I'm Ben Orford, and we're going to show you some safe knife grips, or what we call grasps. We're going to show you eight of the most common grasps, and this will show you how to use a knife safely in a very controlled way without cutting yourself. So the first grip that we're actually going to show you is what we call the forehand grip. So the forehand grip is primarily the most fundamental grip. This is with the knife held in its normal manner with the cutting edge coming away from you. This is most effective whilst used sitting down, either on a chair or on a log. And what you want to avoid straight away is using the knife between your legs. We want to try and avoid cutting any of the major arteries in the inside of our legs. So the safe and the most controlled way of using this grasp is to actually position the piece of wood onto the outside of our thigh like that, which gives us a lot of control, braces the wood against our body, and allows us to use the knife in this very long straight cut manner. Very powerful grip and allows you for removing lots of wood. The major thing where people go wrong is they try and just use their elbow joint which will cut the timber but it will be a very inefficient way of removing wood. What we want to try and do is use the whole length of our arm and pivot from right up here in the shoulder joint. So it looks a little strange to start with so you lift your shoulder and then push away keeping your arm nice and straight and you can see we get nice long straight cuts. So the forehand grip is really good for removing lots of waste material for making long powerful cuts or if you're pointing the end of a stake or a peg. What you want to try and avoid is holding the knife square to the piece of timber. This is quite an inefficient use of the knife. What we want to try and do is allow that blade to sweep right down to a nice slicing angle and you'll see straight away you get much curlier shavings coming off and it's a lot less effort to actually remove the same amount of material. Also when you're using it try and avoid placing your thumb on the back edge of the knife. Some people recommend this but what I find is that actually prevents the shavings from actually coming off the knife and it's a lot more uncomfortable. So keep your hand wrapped around the handle and make those long powerful slicing cuts. So that was the forehand grip. So now what we want to show you is what we call the backhand grip. So we allow the knife to swivel in our hand so that now the cutting edge is facing towards our body. Now this isn't used on its own for working with wood but we do use it in conjunction with other grips. But it's necessary to show you a safe way of holding the knife in this manner. So the technique when using this grip is to always make sure that the point of the knife is pointing away from ourselves and that the first point of contact to our body, if we are pulling the knife towards ourselves, is either the butt of the handle or our actual hand. Now the only real use that this grip has on its own is probably just cutting string and things like that. Effectively, if somebody else is holding a piece of string and we use this grip, we know that we've got the dangerous part of the knife pointing to us, so we take control, and then we can just slice back towards our body in a very controlled manner. So that grip can be used in conjunction with the next grip, which is what we call the scissored grip or the chest lever grip. So still holding the knife in that same backhand grip, we then allow our hands to cross over. So we hold the piece of wood in our one hand and we allow the knife to cross over in front of ourselves so that the cutting edge is actually now pointing away from our body. And if you've got it right, you should be able to see the fingernails on both hands. Try and keep both your hands holding the wood and the knife very close to your body and then by engaging the bevel of the knife into the wood what we're going to do is we're going to push back with our shoulders and that uses our powerful shoulder and chest muscles to remove very controlled slices of wood. So this is a very powerful and controlled grip. Personally I prefer it to the forehand grip for heavy stock removal because your hands are so close to your body and the workpiece you can see what you're doing. You can also apply lots of power and the knife never passes any further away from your body. So it's very safe if you're working in close proximity to other people. The other thing that I like about it is you, you can tone down the power and use the same grip for very fine controlled grips as well. So that was the scissor grasp. So next what we want to show you is the thumb push grasp. 
So effectively what we're going to do is use the thumb of the hand that's holding the piece of wood as a pivot point for the back edge of the knife. So what we allow our thumb to do is apply pressure on the back edge of the knife. And the safety is the fact that as soon as our thumb gets to the end of its travel, the knife can move no further. So you can see we get lots of control and we can continue the cut by just repositioning our hand and our thumb and then continuing the cut along the workpiece. You can drastically improve how this grip works by using your thumb as a pivot point and a fulcrum. So rather than just pushing with your thumb, keep the thumb in the same place and actually draw the hand that's holding the knife back towards the body. And it allows the knife to pivot through the fibres and increases that slicing angle. So that was the thumb push grasp. And next what we want to show you is what we call the pull stroke grasp. Now this is pretty much the same safety techniques as our backhand grip that we showed you earlier on in the fact that we always want to make sure that the tip of the knife is pointing away from ourselves and that we keep our arms very tight to our body. Always try and work back straight towards the body as well. Don't try and work across it because you can cut yourself. But the technique is that you position the piece of wood using your body as a brace and then the hand that holds the piece of wood, you can hold right at the end of the piece of wood. And then what we're going to do is we're going to allow the bevel to engage into the wood. And then we can draw our whole arm back towards our body. Now the safety is as soon as we get to the end of the cup, the handle and our hand and almost our arm hit our body and prevent the knife from travelling any further. So if you aren't using this grip, you may find that your thumb wants to come up and away from the handle just purely because it's a bit more comfortable. So make sure that it doesn't slide down onto the cutting edge. The great advantage of this cut is you get lots of control, you can get very nice fine shavings and you can also get very long cuts because you can work almost the whole length of the workpiece. You can also see any pencil lines that you may have drawn on for shape and things like that. So that was the pull stroke grasp. The next grasp we want to show you is what we call the finger push grasp. So this is mostly designed for when you're cutting tight curves and you want to work back with the grain. So what this involves is again the piece of work resting against your body as a backstop and then we hold the workpiece with just our thumb and forefinger leaving these three fingers on this hand loose so that we can then apply pressure on the back edge of the knife and we can steer the knife round that curve. Now the safety is that we're applying pressure with those fingers and as soon as we get to the end of the stretch of our fingers the knife effectively stops. So this grip is great for refining any tight curves that you've got in your workpiece and it also allows you to angle the blade and sweep the blade round. Not only are we just pushing on the back edge of the knife, but we're actually turning the blade as we go. So this prevents the knife from cutting up grain too much. So that was the finger push grasp. And the next one we want to show you is slightly unusual. It's called the gypsy grasp. Now this grasp actually, it actually means that we're going to hold the knife in a forehand grip and we're going to effectively lock it onto our thigh by locking our arm straight. And the only thing that actually moves is the workpiece. So what we do is we slide the workpiece underneath from behind the blade, engage the bevel, and then we draw back with this hand and we'll get very long, powerful cuts. Now, it's a little bit tricky to get the hang of it to start with, but you'll find that it's very safe because the knife never actually moves. It's only the workpiece that's moving. You can also lock this against your shin. If you want to try and increase the power and stability of it, by locking that hand against your shin, you'll find that your hand won't move quite so much. So you'll find that this is a really good grip if you've ever sort of struggled with making curly shavings on feather sticks, you'll find that this grip will actually help you out a lot. Now you can control the 
depth of cut by angling this backhand so you can either cut deeply or very finely and you can also increase the slicing angle by angling the knife blade again so again we get those really nice wispy shavings coming off so that was the gypsy grasp the next grasp we want to show you is what we call the thumb grasp now this is when you're refining the shape and you're naturally wanting to cut towards yourself and also wanting to use your thumb as a sort of pivot point. Now, the common mistake that people make when they use this cut is they literally slide their thumb onto the end of the workpiece and they drag the knife back towards and actually use the pad of their thumb as a stop. Now, this is not good news. Like, in theory, it shouldn't cut you because the knife is not slicing. But after a while, you'll probably find that you'll end up with little nicks in the pad of your thumb. So if you are using this grip, which is probably the most sort of natural one to use, is to make sure that you tuck your thumb out of the way so that when the knife travels through the wood, it ends up in this void between your thumb and your finger. And that will be quite safe and you're not going to cut yourself. And that's the control. We're just almost coming to the end of our sort of reach with our fingers and that's going to prevent us getting cut and great for refining curves at the very end of a spoon. So that was the thumb grasp. The next grasp we want to show you is what we call the fulcrum grasp. Now this is probably the most complicated so maybe save this till last. Now this grip uses a slightly different technique of actually holding the knife. So rather than holding it in our full grasp this time we use a backhand grip, but we're almost just using just our fingers. So the handle of the knife shouldn't actually make any contact with the palm of our hand. And then the safety in this is that we actually use our finger as a stop. So we actually allow that forefinger to come slightly in front of the handle. And if anything, you can actually let the tip of your finger touch the side of the blade. Make sure it doesn't slide down towards the cutting edge, but it can make contact with the side of the blade itself. Now what we then do is we hold our workpiece, you might find that it, it helps to pivot it against your body and then we use the thumb of the hand that's holding the knife quite open so that there's a good inch and a half of gap between our thumb and the cutting edge and what we do is we use the thumb as a pivot point or a fulcrum and we rotate our hand up engaging the blade so that we get this nice slice and the safety is that that forefinger makes contact with the underside of the workpiece. And the distance between the thumb and the cutting edge should not decrease. So we can work along the workpiece quite safely as we go. But make sure that that finger makes contact with that, that wood there. So those are the eight most common grasps that you'll probably find you'll use when you're whittling. Once you're happy with each grasp, you'll probably find that you'll mix certain elements with another grip and you'll end up with your own sort of fluid carving technique. Make sure that you're completely happy with each safety factor before you commence doing any of the carving grips. But hopefully you've found that really useful and you'll be much safer with your knife and also much better at carving. So hopefully you've liked it and if you like what you see then subscribe to our channel.